Well, healthy and active ageing is our first topic uh, for the afternoon. It's closely linked to lifestyle, obviously, and that includes good nutrition. It's paired with regular physical activity and a good mental state as well. And as our body goes through physical changes, of course, it's really important to understand how best to give our body what it needs. Let's go to the best we have. Nutritionist Sarah DiLorenzo is in the studio. Hello, Sarah. Hi, Ed. Thanks nice for having me. Nice to see you in the flesh. We've got to get your top tips on healthy ageing. I thought we might start with a little flashback. We spoke a few days ago to former NRL player Ben Lucas about how we can maybe actually train a bit smarter once we hit our 40s and then things need to change a little bit don't they because we start to lose muscle mass and I know this is an area of special interest in you not just muscle mass but even bone mass as well. Yes, yeah, so basically the thing with ageing, I mean, none of us can avoid the ageing process and muscle mass is something that is really important to address. So it, it's called sarcopenia. So yeah. sarcopenia starts um, between the ages of 40 and 50 and the thing that's important about it is basically when you actually lose muscle mass, you actually can lose your mind. So systemic reviews have actually shown that muscle mass, um, loss of muscle mass is actually linked to um, cognitive impairment. Really? And the other thing is, just when we think about muscle mass, if you think about your, um, like if I was to do a cross-section of someone's leg around mm. the age of 20, you would see bone, muscle and fat. Yeah. But if I was to do that of someone in their, in their um, sort of 50s and 60s, you would see quite, it would, quite, it would look quite marbled. And it's oh. that marbling that affects um, our, the ageing process and, and it actually, with, with that marbling process, you can imagine we need our muscles to hold up our skeleton. Yeah. And when there's, when there's more fat in there, people are more prone to fractures and falls and things like that. Unfortunately, we're becoming a bit more like a Wagyu cut of beef, aren't It we? is like Wagyu oh, beef. No. <laughs> yes, I know. But okay. there's a solution, though. I okay. mean, it's not really a solution. We can't avoid it. But what I tell all my patients, and I think when we look at the ageing process, I think one of the star factors is to look at protein. Protein yep. is really important. And the thing about protein is a lot of people as they age don't have a lot at, as much of it in their diet. Um, I like whey protein in particular um, when I'm talking in this wellness program about healthy ageing. Yeah. And um, wellness pro- – um, with um, – with whey protein, when they've actually shown that it actually increases the muscle mass around your lower limbs. So people who have even had hip fractures, they will actually benefit from supplementing from whey protein. Interesting. I mean, in terms of our diets, we're bad with our vegetables, we're bad with a lot of our vitamins. Protein, we normally get at least our daily requirement, don't we? Uh, well, the, what I mean, okay, so the daily requirement, I always say to my patients, is 20 to 25 grams per meal you should be estimating but if you'd like to know kind of truly what you should have, it's roughly one kilogram of body weight to one gram of protein. Yep. So um, I think people should be having protein with every meal. Not only does it contribute to better muscles, it also helps with um, keeping your blood sugar stable, stops, um, uh, keeps you full throughout the day and... Um, there is. It's good for your new neurotransmitters, neurological system. So, yeah. yes. but your protein sourced rather from you know processed meats and all the, some of the bad ones. Looking to get it through whey protein and other and other better uh, sources. Yeah, I think I think anyone over fifty uh, over fifty five should actually supplement with whey protein powder. Okay. Definitely, um, there's great ways to do it. You can put it in your smoothie in the morning. I love chia in the morning. It's antioxidant rich. It's full of it's full of um, um, protein as well. So I put scoops of protein powder through that. There is other ways, but as we age, a lot of people tend to have a, a um, less fibre in their diet, and that could just be with an unhealthy ageing process. With so as we're carefree little teens and into our 20s, we're just, you know, testosterone-making machines, both men and women, right, which is what helps with our, um, our muscle th- synthesis and so on. It starts to drop off from, I, I believe, about 30 onwards, doesn't it? Gently, uh, 1% or so... A year, yeah, gem- generally, and okay. it really starts up at thirty. Is the peak for bone, yeah, and then it starts to decline. It's very depressing. Yes. How are we going to make it to a hundred? Anyway, so uh, one way is to obviously boost our protein intake. Can we synthesize more testosterone in our lives through nutrition, or is that a an exercise uh, stimulus response? Um, I think just it. I mean, testosterone is one of the. I mean, you can definitely improve your hormones with. Um, with diet, with well, with lots of fibre and that kind of thing, but yeah, yeah, um, I think yeah. But when when you look at the aging process, it's better to look at um, the 
foods you're going to be eating. And so yeah. I'd like to talk a little bit about what I've got a great idea of and a great stencil of what I think people should be eating every day as they age from 40 on. Okay, wonderful. Let's do this. Let's get your top tips. So set out our, uh, our goals on a plate, Sarah. Okay, so with the ageing process, definitely when we look at our foods, it is very similar to the Mediterranean. But I think that um, three cups of vegetables a day, two serves of fruit a day, Definitely some gorgeous, yummy, complex carbohydrates in at least two meals. Quinoa, buckwheat. Um, the other one I like is brown rice. Um, of course, low GI. But then we want a handful of nuts and seeds. Protein with every meal. And, um, every meal. Yeah, so yeah. that's kind of like a stencil that I give people for yeah. to age well. And two tablespoons of oils. Good. Yes. Good oils. Yeah, so that's a little, like six factors that I think you can look at to age well. Okay. What are some signs and symptoms of people who are aging in an unhealthy way what would we expect okay so when you there is so looking at advanced aging you have to look at things like definitely vision and hearing loss skin elasticity but it's those chronic diseases that plague our health that that plague us now which is the ones we see that actually in our healthcare system a lot which is things like um, arthritis osteoarthritis cardiovascular disease metabolic syndrome um, high blood pressure, um, autoimmune diseases such as hypothyroidism. If you've got those things that are connected to inflammation, you're definitely ha- you definitely have advanced aging. Okay. Now, look, we're meant to be smart creatures, yet a lot of us are baffled by the simple nutrition you're talking about. You just laid out half a dozen things that are pretty good to include every day. Yes. Why do we get so baffled about trying to combat something if we're pre-diabetic or if we're having some of the signs and symptoms when a simple nutritional change, a lifestyle change might tilt the scales back a little bit. Well, the whole thing is like it's um it is it's it's actually really basic, and that's the one the beauty of nutritional medicine and what I love mm. about nutritional nutritional medicine. If you look at all the foods, I mean, if you look at nutrient dense foods and all the all the phytochemicals in foods that help fight diseases, I mean, if you have this basic foundation and you're avoiding processed, refined foods, nutrient poor foods, you're giving yourself a chance for some for for good healthy aging. You're supporting all your body systems, and it's the way that people should really be, you know, heading towards. Well, your clients would love you because you're the nutritionist who's super fit. You actually, you know, walk the walk as well as talk the talk. Thank you. What about exercise in conjunction with your nutrition? Look, we can we can exercise maybe an hour a day if we're lucky. Some push it a little bit more, but then there's 23 more hours in the day when we can stuff things into our mouth, right? But exercise is really important for okay. the changes. Exercise is essential for the aging process. Yeah. It is essential for our bone, for our muscle mass. We actually, the thing about exercise is a lot of my patients and, and older patients who haven't exercised in their life, they sort of think, oh, I don't really want to exercise or get into programs. So I do encourage everyone and for all your wonderful listeners out there, just start doing something that you love. If it's a ballroom dancing class, if it's a hike, just start getting into the exercise program and build into it and enjoy it and embrace it. I mean, this is your life. This is one life you have on this planet. You're yeah. going to make the most of it and exercise definitely for, for um, to, to help with sarcopenia. It's... It's not easy, but it's not hard. I was just talking to my best friend uh, Tuesday, and we've been yeah. best friends. We were born two days apart, so yes. we've had every birthday, every Christmas together, and we're 51. And we're yes. saying, he was saying, oh, I hate getting old, and I'm saying, Chuck, we're 50. We're 50-ish. 50-ish. We can't accept the fact that we're actually over 50. Really? <laughs> but, but we've always exercised. We've always been healthy, and it's, and it's a bit of a mindset too. I think he was having his early midlife crisis, to be honest. But it's a matter of... Uh, you know, just daily rituals and getting some habits and eating good things. And his wife's a vegan, so she eats really well. He eats, you know, vegan fair few nights a week as well. It's just a matter of habits and also mindset. Can I also say just to uh, another interesting thing is, and in what I in my clinic I see this all the time. A lot of my these programs run for. I like to run these programs for about ten weeks, mm-hmm. and the thing is. It takes 66 days for a human being to actually create a habit. Uh-huh. So if you if you live a healthy lifestyle, if you've if you're a, if you've got the diet under control, lifestyle changes, you're doing some exercise, you do that consistently for 66 days, which is nine weeks. You'll find by 10 weeks that this won't be this will just become a natural habit and a change in life. So for everyone listening who might think, oh, it's too much for me to change, it's never too late to start. Baby steps, take each day as it comes, 
age and have the best life you can have. 66 days are a very random figure. Where have you plucked it that It was off? a study I you was reading. Them, no, that's evidence-based. Oh, you're giving them four I days I don't know leeway. the study, but okay. 66 days is the average to create a habit. Yeah, all right. So if people like to find out more, your website's a great one, sdlmethod.com. So that's Sarah DiLorenzo, SDL. Yes. Method. And some of your amazing, delicious-looking recipes are on there as well. Oh, yeah, my, they're fantastic. I've <laughs> seen you like you like my recipes. Yeah, the other day, was it looked like a coconut? No, it was a mushroom ah. uh, with avocado and egg in it. And, oh, my oh, God. But it's so easy. Look, just yeah, to stay and keep that. that, that was amazing. Did but you- simple things like you mentioned, when you cook a mushroom, it changes its cellular composition yes. and then it's even more beneficial Absolutely. for you. Absolutely. You're but reading my Instagram. That. People don't know that. It's <laughs> no, really clever, there is. Sarah. Yeah, I've got a lot of great information on my – I'm always posting things on my Instagram, great yep. tips for people. To follow, yep. yeah, all, all right. about people loving life and being their best. Well, we'll we've got about six more weeks together. This is about our third week, so we'll keep this habit going, right? And keep yes. everybody healthy. Absolutely. No-